Hey, welcome to a new Project Camp update video. In this video, it's highly requested by you guys, we're gonna do a review on our battery powered electric chainsaw and brush cutter. Uh, you guys have been asking for it, but we didn't make a review yet because we wanted to give a real review after really using the tool for a longer period of time. So this is one year later. Uh, both machines are Makita battery powered. Just to point it out, we're not sponsored. We actually try to remove the brands as much as we can. Uh, because we just want to give an unbiased opinion and make sure uh, yeah, we're not sponsored or need to say anything. Um, so yeah, this video we're going to have a look at them. Uh, we're going to do a contest also between an electric and a gas powered one. We're going to test them and see all the pros and cons. But in order to start this whole review, we need to go back one year in time. <laughs> So in today's update, we have something new. It's an electric chainsaw. Uh, I never really worked with an electric chainsaw before. They sound kind of impressive to me. Uh, less noise, that's the main reason why we have it and it doesn't run on fossil fuels. So in this video, I wanna put it together, uh, test it. And a few things I'm particularly interested in is how long does it actually last? Because uh, one saw has two batteries and I have six batteries in total. So I can have three sessions and I'm curious yeah, how, how long before they're empty. How much noise does it make? Uh, and also how, I don't know, how robust and sturdy this machine feels. It feels a bit like a toy almost when you hear it. A small but important note, this video is not sponsored by Makita. We bought the machine by people supporting on Patreon. Uh, you might wonder why we did get a Makita. Basically because all our power tools are already uh, running on that battery system, so we're kind of locked into that system. Uh, which in a way feels bad because you're stuck in an ecosystem and might not choose the best saw, but you just choose it because it fits the rest. But that's in a way is also the powerful thing, that once you have a battery, you can use it on your different devices. I guess that's ups and downsides. So we're gonna chop down some bushes, some trees that I didn't do last time. Uh, big, small, wet, old, new, fresh, all sorts of trees. So we have the saw, cardboard, cardboard, chain, chain oil, thing that holds the chain, and the batteries which we already had ourselves. So we're gonna start off uh, simple by chopping some dead trees. Not sure if you've seen this in update three, I made a few pathways right there, but I left quite a bunch of uh, bigger trees over there because I didn't really wanna cut them. So now I'm gonna clean this all up and chop them with a chainsaw. This looks like a good first cut. Wow, that's kind of impressive actually. So the pot is now clear, went surprisingly fast actually. Uh, the saw itself looks good. A bit dusty. Battery life is two dots, whatever that means. I mean, I'm kind of surprised actually how smooth this went. Uh, but to be fair, these are already dead trees. Uh, they burned down a few years ago, so in a way, I would say an easy score as well. So for the next part, we're going to the swamp because a few weeks ago I cleaned it and I took out a lot of trees. And all those trees need to be chopped into smaller trees. So this uh, test is basically to just do a lot of cutting. So here are a bunch of trees and I'm just gonna chop them down. And 
new batteries. Alright, so all the wood is now uh, chopped. Quite a lot actually, went super fast and super smooth. Maybe it's just because it's new that it's all fun, but I'm kind of still surprised how smooth it goes. Uh, halfway in, the batteries were empty, so we had to change them, just swap in other ones and it's done. Also that's smooth. And now the battery is half empty again, so I would say doing all of this took me one battery pack, so two batteries in total. Um, so now we go to the next part where we're gonna chop just a few bigger trees. And finally we have this pile, you might have seen it in the update tree where I make the pathways. But this was such a big pile of just trees that uh, I never cleaned it, so I always walk over it. Which is far from ideal, not proud of it. But uh, yeah, maybe uh, now is the time to clean that up. Stuff underneath. So for this test we have one full battery. Um, and I'm just gonna put on a time lapse and chop and see how fast it goes and how much battery it takes to get rid of this pile. So this job is not finished yet and uh, I'm out of batteries. Now I did work a bit intensively, a lot of thick wood in a very short time. Um, but yeah, the job is just not finished yet and the batteries are empty. And with a normal chainsaw you could just add fuel and continue. And with this one you have to recharge, so I'll continue tomorrow. Which is perfectly fine for me, but if you're in the middle in the job, I could see that being a bit annoying. But uh, yeah, for now, since we can't cut anyway, let's open this one up to see how it's made. So uh, final verdict, I would say it's a pretty good saw and nice to work with. But I would also say don't really believe anything I'm saying because I'm not at all experienced with chainsaws and it's the first time I'm using it. So obviously everything is exciting and everything is still good and proper. I think the test is really over time. Like, uh, is it still durable after a while? Does everything stay properly? Stuff doesn't break. So I would say make sure to uh, Remind me in a year or something to make a review or to, to talk about this thing because then I could give a real honest review uh, about it. But I would say so far so good. All right, so here we are one year later. This is what the saw looks like now. A bit more worn out. Uh, we used it heavily, um, but still functions as it did before. I actually forgot to mention before the model. It's a DUC353 in case uh, you're curious. And as we were using this throughout the year, we actually also bought an electric brush cutter because same battery system, we kind of liked working with the electric tool. So we got one of these as well. This one is the DUR369A. Um, so I'm gonna show a little bit as well um, how this one has been used and whether we like it or not because we've also been using it for a year. But looking back at the footage, uh, one year ago from this saw, I was kind of excited when we got it uh, because it felt super powerful, quick cuts, but that was also because I was mainly comparing it with a hand saw. So yeah, obviously a chainsaw is a bit more superior than this one. But what I actually needed to do, uh, don't compare it with a hand saw, but compare it with a gas chainsaw because this is kind of the competitor of this one. Um, and this is a saw we got from a friend and we have been using this electric saw both throughout the whole year we've been using both so now we have a pretty good reference between how they compare to each other and i would say the main thing that is different is actually just the power this thing has way more power than this one but let me actually show you in a little contest if we're going to use this one compared to this one to see what the difference is 
so here we have our setup. Here we have one big lock. We chopped in the middle and then we put them like this. So this side is exactly the same as this side. We're gonna chop them with a gas saw and an electric saw. And we're gonna see which one is fastest to start, how long uh, can they cut, which one uh, cuts the fastest. So we're just gonna start and you guys can see how it's gonna be. You can count. Four minutes start? Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. How many did you have? I had a biscuit that rolled away. One. Nine. Two. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. And a half. And once if you have a super sharp thing, also in the beginning, it cuts fucking sick. But if it's not very sharp, it cuts not good at all. And this one still cuts. Mm. They seem pretty similar. Now the only way to settle this is a battle. And then we just fucking gear up and then it can cut seed. Right, so the winner is this one. Tim cut 13 slices, I cut 9 in the same time. And my battery is almost empty as well. So I would have to stop soon where Tim could continue. So yeah, let's say this one has a bit more power. Now back to the review. <laughs> okay, so here we have the pro and con of this machine. Uh, the pro is it's quite quiet compared to the gas powered machine. So sound wise, it's much less. It's also much easier to start. Uh, here you just press a button. And you're good to go with the gas saw you have to pull the cord a few times also depending if the motor is hot or cold uh, so yeah it takes a bit more effort to do which makes this saw uh, also as a third pro very friendly to use uh, especially people here that haven't worked much with a chainsaw this is much easier to just grab and you take it and you cut something and finally, also, it just doesn't use any gas, which is kind of magical. Uh, it just runs on electricity and in our case, solar. So in a way, it's just free energy flowing in. So uh, you can use it as much as there is energy available. Downsides of this saw, uh, it's empty quick. Uh, it runs on two batteries, but once the batteries are empty, you have to recharge them. And this takes a while. And meanwhile, you can't do anything unless you have more batteries. It's not as powerful. Uh, we've been mainly chopping here young, uh, fresh trees, uh, which are kind of easy to cut compared to a thick old tree. So it's good to cut some basic little things, but if you really want to cut a lot, uh, it will be challenging with this one. And it's also hard to fix. Like mechanically, parts like the chain are the same and the locking mechanisms, but the whole motor is all uh, electrical driven. So if something is broken, you can't fix it. Like with a combustion engine, you really have to bring it to Makita where they can change it or replace it. So those are a bit the differences between the two types of saw. 
But they actually also have a lot of uh, similarities. Both have a brake, both have a handle, both uh, have a chain and a mechanism to cut, and both also need to use the chainsaw oil. Um, actually, one little tip on that. You also have this thing called biodegradable oil, which I would recommend. Seems nicer if you cut in the middle of nature. And one extra other tip I would also have in terms of sharpening the chains. Uh, so you kind of need to sharpen the chains after using the chainsaw. And uh, usually you do this with a file, so you go over the teeth and you sharpen it. But there's kind of an art to it, especially in the setting with us, where multiple people use the chainsaw. You don't want one person to clean it all the time, but learning how to clean a chainsaw can be quite challenging, because you need to have the angle right to make sure you sharpen it. So we also discovered this tool, which we like a lot actually, because it sort of explains how to sharpen it. Uh, this thing defines the angle, so it makes sure you put it perpendicular to the chain and you always go in the right direction. Uh, you make sure it's horizontal and it also chops down this smaller part here in front of the chain, which you usually actually with this one probably wouldn't even sharpen. But every now and then you also need to do that to really make sure the chain is sharp. So this tool does all of that, so it's very easy for people that not very experienced with a chainsaw to sharpen the chain after using it. Just a little tip, if you work with multiple people, would recommend this thing. Okay, so that was a rough review for the chainsaw. Next, we're gonna go quickly over the brush cutter as well. A lot of similarity, but also a few differences. So let me show you. All right, so here we have the brush cutter. Um, looks pretty similar to a usual brush cutter as with the chainsaw, except this one uh, works on battery. Also slides in two batteries, same as the chainsaw. And then you have two, three different speeds uh, that you can choose. We've been using this one for over a year as well. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, rough things with it, I would say. A uh, few complications with it as well. Here the plastic cover broke. I would say it's on us because uh, probably some stone or something chopped in there doesn't really seem to be uh, the issue of the machine. However, we did have two electrical issues as well. Uh, one was right after we bought it and one a few weeks ago. And then it just gives an error. You can't really do anything uh, besides uh, bringing it to Makita. And then it was a nice service. It came back a few weeks later. But um, yeah, that was a bit of the downsides. And for this machine, it works also pretty similar as the usual brush cutter. So you have a few blades you can use. Let me actually show those. So when we first started brush cutting, you had all these different kinds of blades and we didn't really know what they meant or how to use them for what uh, purpose. So I'm quickly gonna show you because I think it's very useful information when you start brush cutting. So you have a string cutter like this with a little nylon cord and it's good for chopping grass. But the moment you wanna chop something thicker, this breaks, which is not ideal. It also leaves plastic around. Uh, so you need something bigger. For what we like to use is this uh, triangular blade this is kind of an all-rounder. It's good in just chopping, you can chop thicker things. It's also good for mulching, so you can really uh, make whatever you're gonna cut small. So it could chop grass, but also more like rumbles, uh, like bigger things. If you really wanna cut a lot of rumbles, which we've been doing a lot, like big bushes above you, you can use a blade like this with the uh, blades going downwards because you can really go from top to bottom and it sort of chops everything underneath there. It's a bit more aggressive to use, but very effective for these big brumbles. And then you also, uh, we recently had a play with this blade. It feels very rough to me, it's just a circular saw blade. Um, just spinning there in front of you, I guess I'm used to working with table saws where everything is very fixed and safe and protection covers. And here you are just swinging with a blade. But this mainly used uh, to chop more uh, smaller trees and branches in front of you, so you can just sort of have a, yeah, I guess a saw in front of you chopping the things. The blade we use mainly is this one, because it's a bit of an all-rounder. You can go to things like grass, but also thicker uh, bushes, which sort of just chops. And we also like to use this one if we really take on big brumbles. The blade itself, the saw blade, don't like it. And this one every now and then if we really do the grass. But yeah, this is just standard information for brush cuts, just not specifically for electric ones. So now let's get back to why this electric one is different than a gas one. All right, so here we have the review of the brush cutter, uh, the pros and the cons. Uh, they're pretty similar to the chainsaw, as in it's also less noisy because it's electric. 
uh, it's easier to start and it doesn't use any gas so you can just run it on electricity which is cool uh, the downside is uh, yeah also hard to repair uh, you can't really open it up and it doesn't last super long the battery life so the endurance is not very high however the main difference is it does have enough power uh, it really feels like it, it's good unlike with the chainsaw so those were the two reviews of the brush cutter and the chainsaw now let me give you a final verdict of both of these electric machines all right so here's the final verdict of these two machines uh, used for one year in our setting so big plus for us is that they just make less noise because we're here with many people on this land so you easily disturb each other so the less noise they make the better second one is it's quite friendly to use uh, because you don't need to deal with the gas the starting the choking the hot the cold engine also you can uh, the moment you don't use it you don't have to have it run idle you can just turn it off and turn it back on again when you need it which makes this whole process much more friendly than with a gas powered device i mean it's running on solar which is the main reason why we have it actually it's uh, we're here off grid so we can just use the electricity we harvest directly in the machines it's kind of magical and they're pretty good to just quickly do something uh, because you just pick up the machine and you start you don't have this whole uh, starting up the gas um, powered machine now two main downsides, I would say the chainsaw is a little bit of a joke if you really want a chainsaw, bigger trunks or a lot of them. It's nice in between here and there, but if you really want a chainsaw for multiple hours in a row, I wouldn't recommend this thing. Uh, the brush cutter has less of this problem, it feels like it's really made for the job. But the downside both of them has is that uh, they consume quite a lot of batteries. And for us it's less of a problem because we have already this whole Makita system with a lot of batteries. But if you don't have that, you need to buy a lot of batteries to make sure once they're empty that you can keep going and keep swapping them. Uh, and besides that, the charging just also takes time. So uh, with the gas you can just keep on going all the time and here you might need to wait for your batteries to be charged. But besides that, I would say uh, nice machines to have. My personally, I would I really like the brush cutter because uh, it's just smooth compared to a gas powered one to work with. Quickly starts, quickly stops, I like it. Chainsaw, it's nice to have around, but I notice myself that every now and then I still use the handsaw if I wanna just cut something smaller. And if it's thick, it's still too small for that. But that's just my personal opinion. Um, but yeah, that was the review of our electric sauce. And that's it. Potato time. All right, so that was it for the review video. Uh, now sharpening chainsaw, something you always have to do after using it. Um, if you like the review, let us know, because we could make more reviews like this in the future with some tools we're using. And next week, we're probably going to start renovating the ruin again, take out some uh, big pieces there. Uh, if you only want to see that video, make sure to support on Patreon, so you can see the video one week ahead. If not, we'll just see you again next week at the same time, same channel. Thanks for watching. See you next week.